everybody welcome back to my channel so I know it has been quite a few months since I've uploaded on this channel a lot has happened health aside for a second like my life has just been so busy there's been so much going on and then with mixing health into that my health has been kind of I've had quite a decline in it and there's been a lot going on like I've had procedures and tests and a lot of appointments and I just haven't had time unfortunately to keep up with this channel I've struggled to keep to keep up with my just my vlog channel alone it has been difficult so I apologize so much for not posting and I'm sorry if I had anybody worried my iron has been quite low as well which doesn't help things um, which means I've been tired on top of my normal tiredness I've had my iron tiredness if any of you guys have ever had low iron you'll know how like exhausted like that makes you feel and then we tried to do an iron infusion when i was in hospital getting my tube done i had quite a bad reaction to it and we had to stop it like quarter about quarter of the way through the infusion we had to stop it and then i haven't had any i haven't had another infusion since then we're gonna wait for my next slot of blood which will be the end of this month this month being february so we'll see where my levels are at and then if we need to do the other infusion then we'll have to do it. So all that aside, hello everybody, welcome back. So recently, I think it was last week, was Feeding Tube Awareness Week. On this channel I have done a couple of videos about Feeding Tube Awareness Week before. I'll try and link them below but if not they are on my channel somewhere. Probably posted around February because that's usually the month the feeding tube awareness week is in however i know i'm a little bit late posting this but this was my plan for feeding tube awareness week i thought i would show you guys how i clean and take care of my tube because that is a really important part when you do have a feeding tube it must be cleaned well i know some people just clean it once a day i clean mine multiple times a day between two to three times a day is usually how often i clean it and I've not really had, I've only had like one quite bad infection in my feeding tube and that wasn't really, that wasn't really like my fault, it wasn't anything to do with like not keeping it clean or anything like that, it was an infection from inside my body, not from the outside. So with that said, I'm going to get straight into the video pretty much. So for a lot of this it's just me going to be standing here showing you how to clean it is looking a little bit crusty and red i'm just gonna tuck this away because i don't want to get that near this while we're cleaning okay so you guys have seen these before these are tubey pads you got, i've had them in my videos before they're like little pads that kind of go around your feeding tube to kind of minimize granulation tissue which is basically tissue that grows around your tube like your skin and you have to get it burned off because it can literally grow so big and get out of control um, and they also kind of any leakage or anything like that that you get it, it kind of absorbs it and it just keeps it it's just a nicer thing and it's also pretty as well so that's basically the function of a tubey pad so this one has got like little flowers on and it's really pretty so we're going to be popping that on after I've cleaned it all. Um, I've got a little tray here full of goodies, which I will get to as we progress through the, the cleaning process. Um, and then in between, I'm just going to be using this. This is just um, antibacterial hand sanitizer, but this is ultra hydrating, which is why it looks a bit murky because it's like got moisturizer and stuff in it. This is what I've been using when I do my catheters. Um, I'm going to do an update on my whole bladder issue, like my paralyzed bladder, map we should call it. Um, I want to do a whole video on that because I have a lot to talk about and something kind of exciting which is coming up, but I'll address that when I get to that video. So yeah, if you see me keep reaching off camera, I'm going to put this above my camera so I can keep cleaning my hands as I touch things that aren't clean because I don't want to be putting grubby fingers into my tube. I'm going to clean my hands to start with. Okay, so I usually use either these or these. 
So this is just a skin cleansing wipe. This is what I use around my Hickman line. Um, so I, I use this to clean around my tube. And then sometimes I also use these, which are just the little alcohol prep pads, which you use, you know, before you get injections or IVs. But today, I think we're going to use the skin cleansing wipes. So I usually use about two to clean the whole thing. So I'm just going to go ahead, open them into the tray. So I've just got two things in there. So as you can see, it's a little bit sore and crusty around my tube and at the top. So what we're going to do... The first one is what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and clean, it's kind of hard to show you but if I stand on this side, clean like around the tube and the act, like the actual tube itself and get any like crustiness or gunk or anything like that that's kind of sitting like around the tube and as I do this, as you can see it's kind of collecting on there, I'm kind of folding uh, like the pad over so I'm not rubbing the crust back into it it's like a clean section every time and then i'm just gonna go around the actual skin part as well i'm doing my best to kind of show you guys what i'm doing and i'm sure there's gonna be questions like does it hurt to like kind of move the tube like this it's a little it's more like uncomfortable rather than pain but depending on how new your tube is it, you know it can potentially be painful so now that i've wiped I've, well, from my view, I've wiped all the gunk off and the redness that's left is just from irritation or soreness. I'm just going to go in with the second one and just make sure it's properly clean, like so. Then, next, what we're going to do is we are going to go in with skin prep. So this is basically like a barrier protection, so it protects your skin from the juices and it just kind of helps soothe and reduces like friction from having it like constantly rub against you and stuff like that. So, so you kind of want to like hold your tube away and then kind of spray it from a bit of a distance. So, and then I'm going to do one from the top as well, just to make sure I'm getting all sides. Okay, so I'm just going to give that a minute to just sit there. As it dries, you can kind of feel it's a bit tacky, so it does actually form a barrier, shall we call it, against your skin. And then lastly, before I put on my chibi pad, we're going to go in with some bio oil onto the actual, like, sore part. So I've just got some earbuds or Q-tips you're American. I think, do all Americans call them Q-tips? I don't know. I only know that from watching like American films and stuff like that. So I don't want loads. I'm just going to turn the Q-tip at the nozzle so it just kind of coats the tip of it. And then now that this is dry and the barrier is formed, I'm just going to go in the very, very close part, which is kind of, you can see it's a bit, it looks like, like a scar almost, like right here. That is the actual granulation tissue. And then we're going to get a little bit more on the other side. Yeah, and that's the part that actually grows um, into, like, thick granulation tissue. If you just Google granulation tissue, I'll try and pop up a picture of what it looked like when it, like, before I get it burned off. Yeah, I'm just popping that near. And that just is more of, like, a soothing thing because it makes it feel nice. And then lastly, we're going to pop on a chibi pad. So you just kind of pull your tube around and then there's like a little button, so you press that and then twist it back around like that. Pretty much done. Hang on. And then you just pull your shirt down and get this back out. You're good to go until you have to clean it again basically. That is pretty much it regarding your tube clean and then you just basically do that multiple times a day. Um, sometimes I put the bio oil, bio oil on before the barrier cream, but I find that it, the barrier doesn't set properly when you've got the oil on, whereas if I put the oil on afterwards, it's just very soothing around that area and the barrier still stays on. 
So as the barrier starts to dissolve after you, you know, your clothes are rubbing on it and the tubey pads are rubbing on it a bit and eventually it does wear off the barrier. Um, especially when you've got like your inside juices are leaking out onto the barrier, it dissolves the barrier. So almost as another like added layer of protection, once the barrier's gone, it kind of has to work its way through the oil and especially around that area where it's sore and it does have the scar tissue and the granulation tissue. It's just nice. I particularly find it a good combination. Um, anyway, I guess that is pretty much it. I know this is a kind of a short video, I'm sorry, but I thought it was better than no video and I'm trying to get back in the swing of, you know, filming videos again, but it is tough. And now that our house is almost built, we're about a month and a bit away, less than two months away from it being built and us moving in so I know that's kind of gonna put a you know spanner in the works as well because we're gonna have you know we're gonna be moving in and building furniture and I'm just gonna have to try and find time to film but um anyway if you guys did enjoy this video please do give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and I will see you guys in my next video Bye.